In this week's Photoshop tutorial, I'll teach you how to do a gritty grunge effect in Photoshop. Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new Photoshop tutorial. My name is Manny and you can find me over at RitaPro.com, the channel where you get to learn everything about Photoshop and photography in weekly quick tutorials. So in this week's episode I'm going to teach you how to do a gritty slash grunge effect in Photoshop. Again we're going to work with a bit of opacity, blending options and some filters and also even invert to get the certain effect. Now I also didn't work with smart objects but you can do so in order to work non-constructively. So yeah, enough of the talking, let's get right away into the tutorial. Okay, so over in Photoshop in our right hand side here in the layers palette, you guys get to see already a group. I'm gonna just zoom in a little bit and show you guys quickly the before and after what's coming up. So in the group here, I've got a effect group and this is the before and after, before and after. And also in the tutorial later, I'll teach you guys a technique how to do take it a bit further or can extend this a bit more. So let's zoom out. Okay, and I'm gonna just close this. Let's actually first of all just duplicate this layer, Command J, I'm going to take it all the way out and just turn the version 1 down. So start would be my first start. Yours will obviously be once you've done the building, the retouching, color grading, dodge and burn, all of that stuff. And then you apply this just as a last effect to your image. Okay, so minus start. The next step that I'll do now is press Command J again to duplicate this layer and to create a sharpening effect. So I'm working with a Mac, so for me it's Command J. If you're a Windows person, please press Control when I say Command. Okay, I'm going to rename this to Sharpen. There we go. And I'm going to go all the way up to Filter. We're going to go to Sharpen and we're going to go to Smart Sharpen. Okay, right away a window will pop up. In the left hand side here in our preview window, I'll just zoom over to his face because I can really nicely see the, the effect and the sharpening effect. So first of all, preview is switched on. Again, preset is custom. Let's start with the amount. So I normally start out with like 120 to 130. Okay, let's go with 130 and I can see it applies nicely there. I'm gonna go a little bit up, 140. And for this image, I actually stick with 150. So I normally work between 120 to 150 with my amount for sharpening, not more, not less. Then also radius, you can take that up a bit more to sharpen it and over sharpen it, but it doesn't look so good anymore. You will see it just gets very weird and doesn't look good. So for me, the best option here is just three pixels and stay with three pixels. Also reduce noise by one, sometimes also zero again to just have less noise in there. But I'm gonna stick actually with one for this. So the more noise, the more sharpen as well. Let's have a look here. Again, it just gets not too good. So I'm gonna stick just with one. Okay, then also remove lens blur. Set that on here, lens blur, and hit okay. Great, so that's the first step now just for sharpening. So let's zoom in. So you just sharpen the image a little bit more. Now remember my image is a bit more of a grungy thing here, construction side, guys screaming and it's more men in the subject. So it suits to have the sharpness also on the skin. If you have a female subject, I would actually take this off a little bit the skin. So meaning creating another mask here and then just mask out on the skin or just very subtle mask it out. Okay, so don't apply that too much to the skin. But for this image, I kind of want that effect. Then what we're also gonna do now is just duplicate this layer again. So Command J once again, and this will be our gritty effect. You don't need to rename it right away, but I do so now so you understand in the tutorial where we are. So gritty it is. Next step would be now to invert this layer. So I'm gonna press Command I to invert this layer. And now we're gonna switch the blending options as well. So head over to the blending options, and we're gonna set this all the way to vivid light. Great, so you should be left now with just a gray image. Now, let's head over to surface blur. So let's go to filter. We're gonna to go to blur and go over to surface blur. Another window will pop up. Let's actually make a bit of space here so you guys can see it here. And right away, again, we have a preview over here. But I'm looking more here at my actual picture. So again, first of all, radius. I normally work with around 50 radius. You can also take that up a bit further to enhance this even more. I normally stick around 50. Okay, then as well, threshold. I start between 30, 40, and 50, sometimes 60. Depends on my image again. Let's start out with 30 and just show you guys the effect. So have a look at the halos around the subjects here and around the crane and stuff. 
it gets more and more. The more we turn it up, the more halos we get around our picture. So 40, around 50, and it just gets more and more. So try to avoid these halos because otherwise you have to create again a mask, brush these out, do the effect again. So I'm trying to avoid them or just have them a little bit in my picture. So I'm going to go now again with 50. Let's have a look. Yeah, it actually works. I'm going to go with 40 and stick with 40 for this picture. Okay, so radius set to 50, threshold to 40. Hit OK, and right away that will be applied. Also remember, I'm not working with a smart object here. So if you're working with smart objects, you can always fall back again in the layers and tweak these smart filters again. So this is more non-constructive, not like me now and all on one layer. So if you want to go back and maybe you've done a lot of retouching already, maybe it would be better to create a smart object before you do this. Next step would be now to desaturate everything and get all the colors out. So what I'll do for that is go back to adjustments, go to the hue and saturation adjustment layer, and in the master tones, let's just make a bit of space here, I will take the saturation all the way down. So we left just with a gray image here. Great. Now we're actually done with the effect. We only need to apply this to our image. So what we'll do is make a master shortcut, meaning we will merge all the current layers. So I have a master shortcut for that called Command, Alt, Shift and I on the keyboard. Press those together and right away you've merged all the layers together. Now if you want, you can take Hue and Saturation and Gritty and just delete those layers or again create a group and keep them for future reference. I'm actually going to delete them right away. Now we have that, we have our Sharpen layer and our Gritty effect over here. Let's rename this to Gritty. Last step would literally be go to the Blending options and switch this again to Soft Light. Let's zoom in a little bit and show you guys again the before. So again, before and after, before and after. And if you really want to take it to the next level and overdo this, you can also switch the Blending options to Overlay. And it gets even more. Let's have a look if we take these two layers here. I'll just quickly put them in a group. Again, the before and after before and after. So let's open this, take Gritty again, and I'll actually stick with soft light so it's not that intense. Remember, you can also take the opacity down a little bit. You can create masks and brush it in only into certain areas. You can be very creative with this. I'm gonna zoom out again, and that's basically the Gritty effect already. Last step that I normally do is go back to Adjustments and go to the Curves Adjustment layer and also tweak my highlights a little bit. So first of all, here in the mid-turns, I'll put an anchor point, and then also over here at the highlights, I'll just drag those up slightly, okay? So we have a bit of highlights contrasty here, but I will not apply that to the complete image, only onto the subject. So again, select the mask and press Command I to invert this. Now with B the brush, Control Alt together on the keyboard, move left and right to first of all change the diameter and the hardness, please set that to zero. So that's basically moving up and down set it to zero and diameter, you can also change that again later. Okay, Z on the keyboard, zoom in a bit, B for the brush, make my brush a bit smaller. And now what I'll do is only apply this effect to all the highlighted areas, basically meaning my new curve layer. Okay, and I'm literally just applying this a bit more just to let him pop out a bit more. Okay, let's go down, like it on the jeans here, going to add that effect a bit more. And I'm obviously doing this quite quickly. Please take a bit more time when you guys do this. Yeah, and then I'm basically obviously applying this to all the subjects and the surrounding, everything that I want, more grunginess and more grittiness. Okay, zoom out. As you guys can see, I'm rushing really through this with the brush. Um, yeah, take a bit more time when you guys do this. Something like this and over here. Great, but that's basically it. Again, zooming out. And again, the group one here would be again version two. Okay, so again, let's have a look here. Zoomed in. That is again our before and after, before and after. And if you want to take this now even further, have a look at this tutorial, it's dodge and burn. You can actually create another dodge and burn layer on top and dodge and burn still a little bit more on top of this 
and create a bit more of a grunginess out of this. Guys, so that's basically it for the gritty slash grunge effect in Photoshop. Again, remember, you can always fall back onto the blending options and change it to overlay to get the effect even stronger or work a little bit more with opacities. If you're like me and just can't get enough of Photoshop, then click on your screen right now to subscribe. We send out free Photoshop and photography tutorials every single week. And don't forget, we love to stay in touch. So leave your feedback down below in the comment section or again, send us your tutorial request right away to tutorials at retailpro.com. So thanks again guys for watching. I'll catch you all in the next tutorial. And you are still here. So that means you want to see some more videos, right? Yeah, then wait no longer. First of all, you can download this episode, including the work file straight from our website. Just have a look down below in the description is a link. Or if you're interested to see some more popular videos, check here on the right hand side are some more videos just for you. Yeah, see you in the next one.